developers on the team as well. And we are actually working um, on uh, on our web app. We're using uh, we're actually using less we're using you know, HTML5 stuff. Um, but yeah, so again, this is, you know, for me, it's a topic of semantics, less than sarcasm. Um, I'm trying to swear. Um, so WTF, what is less? <laughs> jumping right into it, you know, so those who actually haven't actually used less before um, might be actually more familiar with the actual the, the CSS, the whole thing. So CSS has actually evolved, you know, two, three, um, all these different things. It's growing, just as, you know, as cool as HTML5 is growing, but for people who are, you know, uh, getting really advanced with it, it's it's still not, it, it, even though it's powerful, it's still not, uh, or actually what I can say, um, a lot of developers, here's a good point, a lot of developers, a lot of good people I know, back-end developers, still have problems with CSS because it's not a logic-driven language, right? Mm -hmm. So they might be, you know, really great at Python on back-end stuff, but they come into it, it's just, you know, it's just the way it's driven, it's not that. So the cool thing that uh, Alexis did, he's a guy who actually did less, who actually programmed it, Cloud has a Twitter handle. Um, he made it so that it was a lot more powerful, it was dynamic, um, and extends the actual CSS behavior. Um, and then you know, that is actually very awesome. And so if you go to less, uh, lesscss.org, this is where you would find it, talk more about it, or you know, see more information about it uh, specifically. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot about what's going on here. And a great example of what exactly what it looks like is you know, it's still CSS. Um, we're going to poke in fun a little bit at SAS, or sexy SAS. <laughs> a little later on, but uh, this is this is you know basically still has you know has this class, but the cool thing is you at you know at base up there, it's got variables. We'll talk a little bit about the variables, what that can do. So that by itself, bringing variables inside of CSS is something that is, is just powerful. You know, uh, at Triblingo we have we're, we're very you know a brand centric company. We have a specific uh, blue or specific orange and things like that. I don't remember what these colors are all the time. Um, so literally, we just have we have a base file. We just set it up, and we call it the hex value just at tl blue. So I'm doing something like that. I need to actually, you know, put it just at tl blue. I don't even know what this hex value is anymore. It's just so it's just something that simple. It, it's pretty powerful. We have nesting going on. We have arguments going on. I'm gonna go through uh, go go through that a little bit more. Uh, the semantic side too. So uh, the way the web was built, right? The W3 consortium. Um, the way this thing was actually built. HTML is new HTML file brings semantics back to the web, right? As far as the document and other stuff, it actually you know, you actually have the, the article, you know, uh, moving away from the, the divs and span tags, you actually have article, a side, other things. So semantics is coming back. For anyone that actually cares about that, people like me, people hopefully like you guys, like, yes, yes. CSS wasn't a part of that whole thought or semantics. It never was. Uh, but with less, you can actually bring that back, you know. Um, I'm talking, so this is you know, a good definition of exactly what semantics means. And this is what I was just talking about as far as, you know, so your regular HTML, you know, did, you name it to have, you name it to have, the classes you have, the article, the footer, things like that. But HTML5, what we're talking about, what we're going to be doing, you know, as far as, you know, what we do here as a meetup, this is semantic, you know, this is semantic HTML uh, documents. But as far as how the semantics work, as far as class names, you know, you want to, you want to try to be as close to, as far as CSS, you know, not blue button, things like that, but you're able to actually have more value to fight and you can change that in the CSS. Um, but yeah, but this is exactly what I was talking about earlier as far as what they said, you know, debit span elements weren't, you know, uh, weren't really considered as far as the whole concept of you what know, Now, <coughs> why should you be using this? Outside, it's my opinion, you know, we just got here because it's awesome, so you guys are really good use it. Uh, there's actually real value uh, why you should be using less. Um, it's going to save you, like, save you time. Uh, I was talking to um, uh, Wes, and actually, I was talking to Wes and talking to a couple other people as far as, you know, been using CSS for years. You know, I'm great at using CSS. Why don't you need to learn something else with less? You know? Um, it, it is exactly what it does. You know, it makes it easier uh, to target different things as far as variables. You can actually have different media types. You know, this, this is an iPhone or, or a mobile phone, different browsers that can actually specifically target these things. Um, supporting a little bit of uh, variables. Anyone that does a little bit more uh, development on Sans Drive, do not repeat yourself. Um, it actually brings that back, brings it not back, brings it into CSS. 
you know, uh, it's very easy to write horrible uh, CSS code, you know, just constantly repeating yourself over and over and over and over again. Um, and then it just, you know, it simplifies how your uh, hierarchy, that's where nesting and things like that come in, you know, as far as, well, how am I telling you a little bit wrong? Uh, what it doesn't do, you know, it doesn't add to support to all browsers, so you still need to have your web prefixes and things like that, but it actually helps you uh, simplify how many times you need to call these things out, you know, so it shortens your, your documents. Um, it, it doesn't detect CSS support, you know, you still need to know what elements in the new uh, CSS classes, you know, the, the new special functions, the animations, transitions, the cool things like that, they work or they don't work, and uh, WebKit, uh, Opera, always in browsers, and then IE9. I don't know if anyone's seen the new Microsoft's Prince Home, but like hipsters are behind ID9 thing now. Yeah. Exactly. I still uninstall it. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, I thought that was interesting. But you, know, still, you still have to know what works, what doesn't work. You know, CSS mm -hmm. 3, you know, not everything works between our browsers. So less does not fix that. It just helps you write it a little better and know how to manage it. Um, this is, you know, what I was talking about the prefixes. There's actually a lot more than just, you know, the, the Opera, the WebKit, things like that. You know, if you really, for whatever reason, want to work, turn it out, there's more browsers, and things that are actually out there. Um, there's a couple of different ways how to use less, and this is why I'm actually, I, 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 I prefer less. Less and SAS vary because, you know, uh, has anyone heard of SAS? Or, yeah, so you guys heard of SAS, who doesn't? Who have never used it? Um, right. um, so they both keep evolving, you know, less than SAS. They're both kind of the same thing, more or less. They both have nesting uh, variables and things like that. I just, I just chose less over SAS. I'm not a native Ruby developer. SAS grew from being in the Ruby environment, you know, and so it evolved to where it moved out of that. But that's where it started, and then they both kind of grew. But if so. As a web, you know, front-end developer, a UX or and things like that, you know, I chose less because it's different. The powerful ways you can do it. You can render. Less is actually, so sort of all these different methods, I'm going to tell you about how you actually write less. It is backwards compatible. It started that way where SAS did it. So if it is, so you can write your normal CSS, and as you're learning, like going back to, you know, your old projects, your current projects, like literally you can go back tonight or tomorrow and start writing less and mix in your current uh, the current projects with this stuff, it, it'll work. It, it's actually backwards compatible, mixing compatible. Um, what I don't recommend, what you could do though, you can, there's, a, there's a JavaScript file, you can actually render it uh, client side. There's this little, you know, inline a JavaScript call, call the class, and then, you know, there's, there's a less file that's literally called whatever, whatever you know, uh, style.less, and that will get rendered on the client. For whatever reason, they're on JavaScript. Yeah, you're screwed. So <laughs> I really don't recommend doing that. Um, for testing, it, 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 here I'm going to be showing you uh, through a code demo using that. But I really do not recommend doing it that way. Um, you can do it server side. Um, less, you know, you can do, you know, there is ways in your sort of Ruby environment or different with that command line. You can do it that way. I'm, I'm just not a back end, you know, gearhead, so. I don't prefer that way either. I, mean, I actually prefer these applications where you, you know, can actually render it on your own end, and when you actually pump it into the system, it's regular CSS. And it's just, it's, you just, you just literally type it in like normal. As soon as you hit save, it, uh, it renders it out, and it exports to normal CSS. Like it's literally nothing different from your, your, uh, your workflow. And so that's the environment I really recommend. The difference would be you just have a separate app open, you know, the less app open. Uh, on the Mac, there's less apps on the Mac, and on the PC, there's, uh, there's uh, Adobe Air apps for this. Um, there's a couple other ones too, and I'm talking about that. I use the uh, Apple Mac, I use the, the Mac one. Um, so this is how you actually run it, because it is, it's not, you know, it, it, it's not the actual CSS, but actually it's a separate file that gets rendered, so you need to know that. Um, so I've talked about a little bit as far as variables, what's actually inside of thing, the cool thing about it. So we have, so we have, you know, the last hand side is where we're talking, this is what you would write. And this is what gets pumped out, so that's what compiles. So you can write, you know, add color, there's actual hex. I was talking about as far as what we would do, add TL blue, write that. And inside the actual ID header, inside the actual ID header, you actually really write, like, you know, 
the color, the font color, which is the color tag, and then the color board, and that gets pumped out in the hex values. So simple enough, but this is actually, you know, beyond super powerful. Mixing, another thing that's, you know, insanely powerful. So, so we have the class called border, right? And so, you know, imagine this would be you, you have your, your base file or your style guides file that you have, you know, what you created. And so something called border, and basically this, this, this thing, this attribute that's going to go on an element, is basically going to be, it's going to have, you know, it's going to be border on top and bottom, it's going to have the top border, we got a one pix, bottom, uh, solid, two pix black, right? So whatever it's going to be on top of. This happens to be on top of the, uh, the, the ID menu, and it has, you know, it's literally calling border, this whole menu. It's literally what it's going to say. So you just write it once, and you're able to use this multiple times. You don't have to call it. It's just, it looks like it's only two lines, so it's like, oh, it's just two lines. You want to save it now. These things can get long, and you're constantly writing these things, like shadows. Like, anyone's using box shadows. You get your mods, you get webkit, you got box shadow. Like, you got, you know, all that is and you can just literally reuse it. Um, then you have your arguments. You know, oh, I'm sorry, ne nesting. So, we have nesting, which I, I love nesting as well. Um, it, it, so, it, so it, it, looks, it looks here. So, we have, so how you would normally write this if it wasn't this way. So, you have your header, and it's color black. But then you have inside your header, you have your navigation. So you have to write pound header space dot navigation, and it goes through as well. Then you have to go again, uh, pound header, things like that, logo, or you know, uh, if you want to drill down like that. If you don't want to drill down like that, it has to be something that's specific for that page. But then you have to think about that when actually building the HTML and things like that. Whereas this can actually, this breakdown and how it renders, it renders everything out. It, drill, it renders the drill down version. So this, this nesting, along with the mixes, along with the, the variables, allows us to have you know, something very powerful. And this is the arguments I was talking about. I was talking about the box shadows. So, so not only do we just have, you know, so this is saving time with, we got the, you know, we're, we're dealing with the uh, Mozilla and, and the, the WebKit browsers and then the regular, you know, so box shadows. But then we're calling arguments. So whenever you use this uh, box shadow in the parentheses, you know, they act, you know, if you, have, if you use this, you know, uh, attack before. And then we actually have down here, uh, this is actually what gets rendered out, two picks. That's the default, right? This is how you would call it where it says box shadows tag two picks, five picks, uh, pixels. If you, it's, you know, if you've never used it before, I can't stress how powerful this is. You know, like if you wanted to have box shadows, if you have an element on your home page and you wanted the, the main header to have, you know, uh, the, the box shadow be pushed down to the right and the left, and you want it to be, you know, faded uh, about like five, two and five picks radius and things like that, you have to write, you know, you have to write this massively, you know, like six lines, right? Um, but then on your about page, you wanted a, you know, your uh, little sidebar. To just maybe not something I pronounce, but still a little box shadow though. Maybe it's on a, a hover effect. You have to write it again. You know, the whole thing, but now you gotta say it's only two pixels, and maybe it's around the whole thing, it's not just the left and right now. You gotta say exactly what's defined in that. This argument literally saves you all this time, now you just have to call exactly what you want in the X and Y values, uh, and the transparency and the color. And it's, it's going back to the whole drive methodology, the whole like don't repeat yourself, try to keep it as clean as possible. If you're not like, it, it's questionable. So it looks like there's uh, default values that are in there, and if you don't specify those additional parameters, they just use the defaults. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so the argument is So yeah, so if you didn't specify anything, you would just leave the, the, the parentheses blank. You would just, or just parenthesis nothing inside of them, and it, it would say zero zero, and it'd be full wrapped around. Yeah. Right. So you can have. So if you, if you know you're going to be you know using something by default, do it in there. But then the, the one or two occasions you might change it, you know, you have that flexibility. Yes. Arguments is a reserved word which pulls in all the arguments. Yes. Are there yeah. others like that? Uh, there, a little bit as far as like, um, as far as less is concerned, there's um, some functionality as far as like functions that you want to do. Uh, um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't drill down too much in this talk as far as you want to say, uh, say, you say, you should, say you have something, right? And you, you have box shadows, but the color, uh, the color is set to black. Now, whenever, Whenever this is set to black, do this. So there is specific tags for that. You know, uh, you have some of the capabilities. And it's a little, it's a little interesting. Um, but so I, I didn't dive that deep into this particular one. Um, but arguments about the main, the biggest call that you would use. You could, now uh, what you, if you didn't, 
you can, you can even simplify this. I should put this in as well. You can simplify this. You didn't actually have to use arguments. Say you just, you know, uh, I'll, I'll show it in the demo, but say you just wanted the x and y values to be that way, and then you want, you know, their blur and color is going to be the exact same every single time. You can split that down there and have the x and y be variables, and you just call it, you know, x, x val, y val, and then specifically call that. And then uh, variables work the same. Anyone does JavaScript or anything does any other type of programming, variables work the same thing, global, global, inside. Uh, variable. So you call something, you, you, you define a variable inside here, it's the same name somewhere else, it doesn't matter. And then, so then you have operations. Um, this is, this, I, you know, I like this a lot, this one, you know, as far as, I personally don't use other different operations, but you can do, you know, you can actually do math inside of this as well. I like just the font size, I actually think I have a lot of control over the font sizes now. Um, you yeah, know, so I have a page title, and I'll say, you know, make the page title, title uh, you know, 35 points, and then I'll literally have that. You know, I'll just say, so the page title is that, and then the next thing, so I know if this is a, a, a link, I just say, you know, at uh, font size, you know, header, header size, and then times 0.5, so I know it's going to be half of that, or, or point, you know, point 0.2, I know it's going to be 10%, whatever that size is. I have a lot more control in knowing what my default is versus the guessing game of what all these browsers do for font size. And actually, I'm going to go back to it. Actually, we can do a lot more with this as well. I'm not, I apologize for not showing some demo over there as well. Uh, you can do operations on transitions. You do operations on, um, you know, just, just imagine doing any, any type of math that you have, you know, any type of CSS, they have three properties where you're animating and doing like that. So there's buttons. Sort of bootstrap, you know, you hover over different elements, they take, they take advantage of a lot too, and you can actually see what they're doing. When you hover over something, it actually, they're, 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 Using, you can use this type of math inside of here, not using JavaScript, doing straight this, and just calculating exactly how much to move the gradient elements. Uh, you can say darken. There's a, oh, going back to as far as some of, some of the keywords that's actually being used. Uh, there's darken, lighten. You know, so if you have a uh, uh, hex value of 33333, three, 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 and you can say lighten by 20%, it'll lighten that. Over on hover, lighten. You know, in the params and that hex value, it'll lighten that 20% more than others. Um, so you, if you wanted that type of thing, you know, you could do things like that. And this is where, so my whole, you know, screw sass and Hamel. I'm really strongly dependent about Hamel. Anyone ever use Hamel before? All right, so you might actually like Hamel. So, <laughs> you know, I got it. Cool. <laughs> I loathe him. I hate it. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a Ruby developer, and you know, I think it was. I forget the guy who actually made it. But I swear he was a Ruby developer, and then he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna change this to be awesome." No, it's retarded. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was yeah. And Chas and Hamill kind of like, you know they're kind of you know kind of the same concept of house ass. You know, Hamill Hamill Markup is like you know they're. HTML works, you know, like it, it looks good. You have your brackets, you put them in there, it looks good. The spacing, like it's, it's, has anyone written Python before? All right, so, so you know the space, it's very diagonal about the spacing, right? But it's bringing that to like HTML. Why? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know why would you, you know, why would you get that? There's markdown HTML generators out there. It, oh my, yeah, so that's, I, I didn't get it. You know, we, we started doing our Triplingo web app in Hamble, and it was, I wanted to blow my brains out. It was, <laughs> it was a mess, you know, like if you, you know, if you, you literally had to, you know, nest things with spaces, you would, you know, do two dot spaces, and then if you didn't realize you got halfway through the document and your office space would give you this obscure error message, and you're like, what the hell? I don't know what's wrong with that. I don't, I don't know. And then you find out you're just off the space. Um, with all due respect, you have to pay attention to what you have your tab settings in your ID set to. Yes. <laughs> they never say anything. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, didn't, they didn't let you know. You know, I, I, you know, I, I use Coda for my, you know, my, my development, and I, I never once even attempted to, to show the, the invisible printer. Before and I had to do that. One you know, I had to know exactly how many spaces I had in between. It was, it was just stupid. Uh, and then it actually makes, as far as the learning curve and learning Ruby, it was actually worse because I didn't, you know, I didn't know Ruby, I didn't know Rails, and so I'm not. I, I was new to Ruby, new to Rails, didn't know Hamel, and then it just, it, just, it was just, it was a mess. I didn't know what was going on. I changed everything. So staff started off kind of the same way. Then they changed it. It went on. Oh, the less came out. And they said, Oh, we're cool too. You know, we got sassy sass. You know, we're a little back. 
they weren't backwards compatible. You couldn't mix the two different things. Now they're like, oh, we can mix. And you know, people are doing that better, you know, I'm a user review. I'm using this. Um, and then so they're they're what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so this is kind of, you know, you there's, there's the typical SAS, and then there's you know, the sexy SAS, the SCSS. Uh, so you can see the SAS, how there's, there's nothing, there's no brackets anymore, you know, it's just very dependent on the spacing. Um, and the same thing with the handle, you know, it's got, it's got pounds, it's got, you know, uh, you wouldn't, you, know, you don't do the brackets, div ID, you do the pounds with the spots, and the equal signs, and dashes, and it has its own language, it's like HTML, why not it? It was it was fine. Um, so a lot of us go this way, a lot of things. But if you're if you weren't really a web developer, and it's my, you know, I didn't, I didn't really do it. If you weren't a web developer, I could see why you would want to change it. That's what happens at this point. And we're not recommending you know, a web developer to play the game at all. Um, it's it's just convention over configuration. I mean, people want to be able to like look at code really quickly. Someone else's code, right, right, and, right. And honestly, you can't always see that with uh, with CSS or anything else. Or, you know, if you put all your stuff on one line, on one thing, yeah, you know, so it, it's horrible. Every but I almost always have to use like, you know, HTML tidy behind somebody else. That's like, what sold me on it because yeah. it looks pretty. Yeah, yeah, it sold me. I was like, oh my, God, this is gorgeous. You know, the white space, all the stuff. It sold me on that. But I man, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm just. It's a web developer, you know, it's a matrix. I can see it, I get it. You know, I don't know, I don't need I don't need to be pretty. I mean if, if you do though, if you do want to get tidy, I can see, I can see that. I can see it, but developing it though is, is it's, a, it's it's too much of a pain to you know the, the, what you get out of what you what would go into it. Well I think it's just the different you're you're used to doing it a certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean you know, right, so we got a, we got a champion for it. I'm not gonna knock it. You know, everyone can kind of be wrong. Further add another bullet point against handles. It's very hard to debug a RA, RA if you're having to run that quick. You can't get each visualization from elements like tags or IDs or relationships. You can that was that was kind of my issue as well. And I, but I couldn't. To, in, all, in all fairness, though, I, I was my first introduction to handle was also being foreign. I got set the browser and Ruby. So it was just mess on top of mess. Well, I think you misunderstand me. I'm not totally for it. Uh, the, the, uh, the thing is, is you know, if it's if it's done right, it's it's very easy to do if you, if you're used to doing it that way. Yeah. But like HTML tidy, right? So you can write, you can use as many spaces or whatever. Use HTML tidy. It's going to put it indented all perfectly, mm -hmm. like it should be. Yeah. With this, with with Hamel or or even with, I, I I do a lot of CoffeeScript and mm -hmm. it's it's very space based. So, but uh, you know that's that's actually programming. This is format. This is formatting. This yeah, is it, it, yeah, it, it, it comes it, when you have a trained UI developer who truly cares about semantics and the way markup is structured, and you you know you you have a passion for these things, um, you know, and then you've got kind of back end developers who are just getting into this uh, UI market and and, exactly. and and starting to mess around with CSS, and they've never really been on that UI side of the of the house, and that's. I think where you have your champions versus your. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm much more on the back end. I'm like, I just want it to work. That, that, that was my thought. You know, the, the, the formatting, I could care less about. It. Yes. Like, I just wanted it, it wasn't, yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't a web developer who created this. Right, it exactly. Yeah. Well, um, I'll just give you a little ammunition. A, a, lot of, <laughs> a, a lot of technical people, and I'm a technical person, but a lot of technical people will, um, will look at things in a vacuum. And uh, the two things that, that argue for less are, number one, it's backward compatible. Number two, Twitter bootstrap, which has taken, seems to have taken a, a, a exploded, like it. has validated it, whereas SAS hasn't been validated by other than Ruby and Rails. Yeah, mm. exactly. Good yeah. point. SAS was first, and then... Also, in another the case with a tool I'm using called Status, which is less than SAS, except for the Node.js frame. Mm -hmm. yeah, so only stuff that I've never seen inside of that. Right. So that's, I mean, so you guys are hearing it. And so the key point is that Twitter bootstrap kind of validated it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, my opinion wasn't enough alone. I'm sure it was. Yeah, these guys are Twitter, but yeah, they kind of lasted on my opinion too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Exactly, exactly, exactly. You need to do the work for me. That's all about it. Oh. Um, 
But it, but that's that's exactly it, you know. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit more about SAS later on too, but 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 that's <laughs> And so as far as the frameworks that, you know, uh, touch a little bit, you know, Twitter bootstrap, different things, um, why, why you shouldn't, why you shouldn't, you know, they're not, everything isn't always, you know, the glory by saying, like, this is going to save my project, this is going to kill the project, what's going to do. Um, using things like Twitter bootstrap or, or others, uh, blueprints as far as CSS frameworks, things like that, you know, can save, um, you can increase your efficiency of what's going on, the, the code consistency, but what's going to happen if you, you know, you can sometimes, you know, even if myself, you know, one day you come to the next day you come in and you kind of like change the way you write. It just, it just happens. So this is written, it was written and, and really edited in one way. So, you know, it's very consistent throughout. Um, they rigorously tested, some, some of them, not everyone, but a lot of these, you know, popular frameworks have been rigorously tested between all the different browsers, and whereas, you know, that can save you Tons of times, you know, trying to balance this between Opera and the ID 6, 7, 8, and 9, and other like browsers and stuff like that. You know, they would tell you what works or what doesn't work. They'll tell you what doesn't work. Hey, we know this doesn't work between all these well, Do this for ID or do this for whatever. Uh, maintaining them um, in the repeatable process. This is negative, though. Uh, learning curve. Um, you know, some of these things. Uh, there's uh, 960 uh, grid systems, blue trends, all these different grids, all these stuff like that, and you gotta figure out exactly like is it span 12 or is it you know push two? Like what what am I doing again? What's going on? Um, so depending on what sort of project, some people might be using something, but I know you before you gotta figure out exactly what works, what doesn't work. Um, they're not always uh, a steep learning curve. Some of these are you know pretty easy, and it, 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 it's just you know uh, structural uh, HTML uh, with something that just class text like that, but the real power behind it is knowing what's available, and, and you know, if you don't know what's there, then that's what you don't know. Uh, HTML, you know, uh, the CSS, you just get ridiculous. You know, they try to, they want to put all this cool stuff in there, but it could just blow your file, you know, your whole thing system on the way. You know, you're doing a one page, a uh, little cool thing, all of a sudden, you know, you got 50 megs, like, you know, it's more than this, you know, it, it, although it's, Seamless and it's written on the same way. You know, you, you didn't write it. You don't know how you know, it's different. Um, and then, you know, um, as cool as Bootstrap is, thing with that, it's still uh, Bootstrap isn't. You know, it is. It, it's close to semantics, but it's, it's not written in HTML5. You know, tags and so it's you know things like that. Some of mine from mine, but just you know, take that and understand what's going on. Uh, HTML5 was pretty. Um, this does it just, it just gives you just literally what it says, it's just bare essentials, you know, kind of gives you the uh, the tip, do it back, kind of really starts you off. You know, there's no nothing fancy, no nothing, just it gives you the clean, you know, structure, uh, integrity behind you, HTML5, and you can go on and put it what's there. It doesn't care about less that CSS, it actually starts you just regular CSS. So unless you already have a less workflow, you know, that's so both what you can do that. Um, and then Bootstrap does. Bootstrap actually does give you options to use less. Although, um, so again, and then, uh, so Bootstrap gives you the option for less, and then if you're not, it doesn't have a more friendly way to to just start with less. Like you have to go in there and activate by command line, do some kind of cool, you know, crazy things. If you're just, you know, if you're front end developer, that type of stuff can kind of be a little scary. Um, there's actually something else called a. Let me call them up. So, let's see. Yeah. So, initializer. This is actually what I would actually recommend. You know, it actually so it gives you the option for the HTML5 bullet for you, and it also gives you the bootstrap stuff too. Um, but it gives you it gives you a bit more flexibility, a bit more options. You know, like if you want less, you know, you do have to you know, kind of get, but you don't have to like. Render and go to make, you know, like get crazy with a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I want to play a little bit as far as, you know, I'm not too deep, not too crazy. Not too crazy. Just show how easy and simple some of the stuff is. Uh, is there any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms? Yes. Well, criticisms, yeah, I had to raise my hand. Um, <laughs> the, so I started studying less last week and I immediately got uh, hurt a little bit. Uh, because of one thing, I was, I was wondering if you're going to say it or not. 
I don't think a, you can really call a variable uh, a variable unless you can change it because that's what variable means. <laughs> okay? So um, it's important to know that less variables cannot be changed. Right, right. So it's like all less variables are constants. Yeah. You can't redefine them after they you defined it one time. Unless of course I mean of course you could use jQuery and select it and change it. Exactly, but, yeah. but as far as like those things in the less Yeah, you never want it is that, you know. Yeah. That, that, was, that was my big poo poo of well, to my knowledge, you can't necessarily change variables inside CSS free spec at, at the moment either. What if it's basically created as a constant? What would that again? What was Can you uh, change variables inside CSS free directly? Or you can't create variables inside CSS free. You can't create them in space. Yeah, so it's not part of the measure. Yeah. Um, no, I was just saying you could overwrite them if you yeah, with yeah. the jQuery select. You could override, you know, you could change it on the fly. You can tie, you, but, you know, less, less gives you the ability to tie in with the uh, with JavaScript stuff. Yeah. And you anyway, actually have to that was all. tie that was in with I'm getting into it. Um, so there, there is that. There is, you know, there is some other limitations as far as less. But, um, but again, as far as what what it's doing with CSS deal, um, it's not it's not converting, you know, CSS into a this dynamic, powerful, you know, lot of different language. You know, it's doing, it's doing what it is. Uh, so, so CSS is still, you know, it's still CSS is what it is. Um, but yeah, let's see. So, so this is initializer. Uh, so I, I really recommend it. You know, kind of so instead of going to HTML you know, the boilerplate one, you just got kind of come here and it actually gives you a bit more control of what you're going to be doing. Um, and then you click bootstrap your fine tune it. So yeah, so you can go to these other things. But, but yeah. Has anyone uh, played with Bootstrap at all? There's two people, a couple, three. Um, so, so, so this is pretty cool. So, I mean, it, it, it's another, it's just you know, just a framework to let you know what's going on. Uh, so this, this is actual site that lets you know, you know, this is what it's using. So just tell you what's happening. This is the example, and it's just, it's just a simple framework about what's going on. Um, but as far as the power behind less is what they're doing, you know, you can actually see. So this is their, the variables, the constants between, you know, the colors, you know, the links, the uh, interactions. You can actually call, you know, the face font. This is actually what you would give, you know, TL. You know, we just have TL font and just constantly. So if we want to use, um, it's, uh, trade gothic is, is, is our classic font that we use for for lingo. And so, you know, that's exactly what we use. Um, but yeah. So as far as so this is I mean this is something simple this is this is actually so by default it, it'll give you you know give you something like this except you know kind of change you know, just really quick the new Jimwa 3.0 is going to be based on the Say it again. Jimwa 3.0. They're using Twitter yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's this thing is it, it, it's growing pretty heavily. You know, um, we're we're not using Bootstrap, but um, but I mean, you know, some people are using this debate. We were already using something before. Um, the question or discussion? No, I'm asking if you could grow your font. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you say more about like what Bootstrap is and how you you know? Okay, yeah, so, so I'm sorry. So, um, so Bootstrap, Twitter so, so Bootstrap, it's a framework that actually is more than this. Sometimes there's CSS frameworks where, um, you know, like if you want to grid, you know, CSS grid frameworks. So Twitter Bootstrap has grid framework, it's, you know, then it's responsive, you know, actually do break down to responsive nature as well. Um, so it's already baked in, you know, goes down to, this, you know, has the whole uh, mobile side. So, this is baked. If you don't want this, you don't have to have it. You know, it, it, it gives you options if you want responsive, if you want fluid. Um, let you know um, you can protect it, that grid size. Uh, so it's 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 a framework that it actually gives you. To me, it's one of the most. I mean, I guess a lot of people. It's, it's really robust. It can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Um, it gives you uh, a very great basic style system. You know, it's got buttons. Uh, very, you know, good detailed buttons, uh, sizing, uh, let me pull that back up.
I would just call it a, a front end starter kit. Yeah. You know, it's everything you might need. It's got JavaScript in it. Um, so it's got it, but it doesn't have everything you might want. Yeah, it's not going to be everything on the same. If you, if you haven't started a project yet, this is where it's at. If you started something already, you wouldn't want to use, you know, you wouldn't want to jump into a framework like this. If you haven't started something and you don't, turn it into like if you use uh, jQuery uh, UI uh, yes. before. So we, we don't use jQuery, uh, you want to roll thing, you know, because it's very specific and you kind of want to go in and like, and you start it, it's good, you're there, but then you got to go back and take stuff out and kind of be a pain doing all that stuff. Um, so if you have a specific look, sometimes these frameworks can, can work against you. Um, that's kind of, but you can kind of take some of that stuff out. So you, you know, if you want at least your structure, you can just say, I just, I just want the structure, just set me up, give me the grids, uh, give me the CSS to allow me to get, you know, to name my classes. You know, let me know what I want to do. So if you want to, you know, a two column thing, or a three column, you know, let you let you have all that set. Um, and this is this is actually just telling you. So if you want just, just bare bones starter, you know, uh, or versus if you actually want something pretty pretty deep, you know. Uh, but yeah, it is. This is actually really good if you just if you don't have anything set. You, know, you wouldn't want to change in the middle of the project. You don't want to throw how different does it sound it's similar to your WordPress and Google? That's what they do. They create the framework for you and just go ahead and add the templates. And so th those are both content management systems. You know, that's entirely different. Server side and yeah. stuff templates as yeah. well, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, whereas this is a strictly client side. Yeah. yeah. It's entirely, you know, it's straight, straight the, the code for that. Uh, any other questions? I've talked to people who have been scared off by the fact that um, less can run in the front end. Can you get all the functionality of less without touching JavaScript? Or are there some things that you can only run? Yes, yeah, so that's what I mentioned earlier. So I would not remotely, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm using it in this demo, but you know, there's, you know, um, this app, this is what I was saying, you know, um, I don't know, if you can do any, you know, less versions from my laptop, that's why I don't it's there. But uh, this particular app, is what you have to do. I recommend just using this, where you actually you would actually drop it in here, and your, your workflow, you literally just save it, it, it'll compile it, put it in the, you know, whatever folder you want it to be in, so you have a less folder, you have a CSS folder, or if you all want it in one, however your workflow is, it, you're actually gonna have, you know, separate files. Um, I would just, yeah, I would not recommend running via, you know, the client side, you, know, you wanna have it, you wanna have it, you know, either done server side, so that by the time it gets to the, the, the user, it's already done, or you want it done, even before it's on the server. So that's, that's the way I prefer. I prefer it rendered before it even is on the server. So, but yeah. Is that, is that answered? Yeah, so there's like all the math and stuff still works if you run on the server? Yeah, every, everything is converted. So yeah, every, everything works. Yeah, exactly. So as soon, soon as you render it, um, you know, as so, soon as it gets actually rendered, everything works. Because it actually looks like regular CSS. It actually gets compiled. Uh, less compiled into how it actually would you know normally look at normal CSS. So it functions just like normal CSS. Yeah, but if you're if you're calling tag, this is what I was talking about. So if you're calling CSS three specific stuff, and the browser doesn't support it, it's nothing to do with less. You know, it's just you know it's, it's converting it over to what that is, which is the browser supporting. So that math, I was wondering the same thing. So that has to be done when you compile it. After that, the math is done before you put it on the server in your case. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you think about it back to, to constant variables. There's nothing that changes. Yeah. So there's no, um, it, it's like it, it, it runs a straight CSS, it, it runs straight from top to bottom there's one time like back up. and then presents but still, it. Still, just by having constant, having you have all these same variables to say, rig widths and height space on different. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, knowing the difference, you know, is it, still good. Knowing knowing the constraints of what the variable is going to do, the variable is going to do for you, but you know, it, it will set the constraints. So those variables like that. width and stuff <coughs> could be changing, um, or it's not? Not, not in the sense that you know you're going to redefine width. You're, you're you're redefining whatever element you're changing. So. Yeah. Um, let me see. So as far as so what? It, it, it's basically it's basically it's great for portions. Yeah. So, so you, you'd like to say, okay, my main font is 10. My header font is going to be the main font plus 10. My mid-level font is going to be my main font plus 5. And you show it to the client, they're like, no, we don't, we don't, we think that's too, it's too small. Well, then all you have to do is that one time you change the main font from 10 to 12, and everything else is increased relatively. 
but it only it just happens one time. Right. I mean, it's not it doesn't do anything dynamically. It's just well, one time. One thing that might help these guys is if you're if you're doing anything other than the JavaScript which he's not recommending, the the browser will never see less. It's going to just see CSS. Exactly. So your HTTP request is going to pull down the CSS file and never see it. It's all done on the server or in his app. Okay. Let me actually. So this is this is actually Bootstrap up right there. But I'm sorry, well. So this is so it's actually these are you know less files. And if I were to actually not use the JavaScript, let me show you the actual the line here. So boilerplate pumps out all this. You know, this actually which you can boilerplate and you know you take this stuff out wherever you don't want. But these this is actually what I recommend not having. You, know? um, you would actually want to actually, you know, it's gonna it's gonna re-render. It'll it'll I guess I can show it.
questions. And so you would, although boilerplate, the frameworks, boiler, uh, maybe not boilerplate or a bootstrap, I wouldn't recommend mixing into a current project, less I would. You know, you wouldn't have to like, oh crap, not have to rewrite all of these CSS files. No, you literally just, you know, just, just, just put them in there, um, have it converted, and then start from now, let them go. Um, and you just start loving it. The, you know, you, you might want to start rewriting, so like whatever element you're in, you might want to start re-nesting it. Um, I mean, that's pretty quick per, per element. Just go back and just put them inside of it. So, you know, this header, this H1 is inside the header, and then, you know, the, the end hover is for that. You might want to start doing those. So, <coughs> yeah, yeah. So, you, yeah, so you would just, yeah, you would just change them as, you would just change one up to less, load them into the, the, the app, or however you would do it, server side, whatever you would do it, and that will convert it back to CSS. It would be the exact same thing, except it could be minified. So if you got all your spaces and stuff like that, that's a chop off the spaces. Keep the comments for the chop off the spaces. How's the error reporting with less? It's good, you know. Uh, it, it, you know, let me you know, let me show you. So if, if, um, if I haven't defined something like um, right, totally like, what the heck is that? You know, you never, never defined it before. So like, you know, where it's at, what exactly, what it is, what line it is, and you're like, oh, I've never defined this before. That's what it was. You know? Boom. Everyone use it, everything's good to go. I'm gonna let you know the law of, of what changed, what didn't change. Better than that, I'm sure. It, <laughs> 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 it's yeah, you, you can't you cannot lose. Um another question. So where do you get the less app? Where do you download that? Uh so uh get what do you guys Incident57.com? That's a good idea. Um, I, I would have, if you have a Mac, I would really recommend it. There's, um, you know, I have a resources. Uh, you know, this, you know, so these are some of the, uh, so you know, the initializer. I really recommend, you know, using that versus just using the HTML file for what bullet click first, or even the GitHub, even you know, the Bootstrap one, I go to initialize it. Um, and as far as, oh uh, yeah, so, so, all that crap was talking about SAS. <laughs> they keep updating the damn thing, right? Uh, All right, so does less have the ability to output the actual true line number where it's found? Because one Inside of the, less, yes. But can it output it to the actual compiled CSS that can be picked up by like a Firebug plugin? So because when you're looking at your Compile CSS the line numbers. It won't match up. That would that would that would be that's difficult. Yeah. But that is so. SAS can do it. So can less output the line numbers of where it's truly found. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you you import you know it's a bootstrap. If you go if you go through the uh, in, inventor visor or whatever, whatever, whatever I'd say um, initializer, go the initializer and you get to, you get to use it that way. Uh, it's going to give you like 50 different less files. It's going to break it all down for you. It's have more control. It's going to import it into one, and then it's going to compile it into one CSS doc, right? Right. Um, and that's cool. But then, yeah, you know, you're on the file. It's like, hey, this is you know, if you change something, this is broken. It's like it's saying it's, it's broken online 4,012. Everything I have is you know 40, 40, you know, line long. Like, what, are you, what are you talking about? Right. So yeah, that's a downside to less. Um, is that there's a uh, SAS keeps you know they keep trying to one up less because less is awesome and everyone is adopting to less uh, function and they actually have a condition of you have to do is for loops. that is awesome I so badly want to hate SAS but that is awesome <laughs> um, I'm more than sure less will get it uh, you know they keep they keep just you know tip tip at that point each other. Um, but, but that, that is what SAS It's a community is. project, right? So you can contribute the patches if you need to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've got all this t extra time, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Three other people who use stylus don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, so there is, is, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Or, yes. Um, well, I've been sold on less for a while. Um, haven't had a lot of opportunity to really use it, but I've, I've also got three or four other developers that I have to convince. Um, 
So not that it's going to be that hard, but I mean, what, what would you say is the best elevator pitch for why you know, everyone on this team needs to be on board for this to work? For, for one and two? Or, or for one? For less. Well, I mean, if they're already using left taps. No, we're not trying to. You're not using anything. Oh, okay, I was going to say, like, you know, if they're already using taps, there are, there are language differences. They're, they're, they're both through a lot. Of yeah. so, yeah, There's so. always that, that little bit of resistance. There's a uh, article on Rewrite Web, I think, or it's it's about the Luddites when you know when the Industrial Revolution came along and people were fighting the machines that were doing the job better than the humans were doing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that whole uh, situation where you know you don't want to give up uh, that control to a machine yeah. to, to compile that code for you. Um, and it's abstracted away, so so you can do your job better and easier. So there's many pitches you can make. Just Google it, and I think it's on Rewrite Web that there's a really long article that that goes into specifics as to how and why you should either be using less or SAS or something. I mean, the easiest thing what I would say, the very strip, 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 strip down version, of the, you know, what you would say is just, you know, not the most amazing thing, just because less is not compatible. Like, you, what, what what are you using? You know, just 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 leave it in there. Write your normal CSS, right? Just do what you normally would do, and just give it a try. Every now and then, put a, you know, put a variable in there. Every now and then, do it, do it, do a mix in, you know, and then they will fall in love with it. They they will see how easy it is. You know, one of the things is the columns. I was boiling like, for example, I was using columns, you know, for for our for actual legal web app we're doing. You know, uh, one of the things as far as the uh, uh, where was that? This is the settings, the uh, the billing thing, right? So I just had it. And I'm just like, you know, ah, okay, columns. God, I already did it. It's like, you know, multi columns, you know, four, boom, done. Like, holy crap, this is awesome. Because I keep really reselling it to myself. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> but on, on, a, on the other side of that, I mean, people who truly care about semantics and our UI developers have a hard time adopting these things. I mean, they want that control, they want to see the fine grain. Because that's what we've dealt with for so long. So even myself, you know, I haven't. I'll use SAS, and I guess I'll use less now. But, um, <laughs> um, but anyway, you know, I, but I still mix in my old school CSS with it. So it's it's like you know, I'll use some features of it, but I don't truly take advantage of the power yet. But it, I guess you know, it's coming. The more you start using it, though, like you can actually bring the semantics with it. You know, one of the cool things, you know, so the way. Because you really, once you really start adapting, then you start changing the way you write the page structure, right? You know, because right now, if you haven't used it, you know, uh, the real power, the real, real power ties in the less class names you have for you to contribute. You know, so right now, we have for CSS head, you know, you got, you got span, button, awesome, big, great. <laughs> you know, um, whereas with with less, you just, you know, you have, you know, just either you just literally just have button. You know, because then you do you 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 go down the boundary of it. You you know what page it's on, what elements it's in. You know all that stuff, and then you could you know you have all the elements that attribute to it because you know where it's at specifically without giving it a special you know idea blessing. So you, that's the once you, once you really adapt, you start writing your right? HTML differently. Then you can actually have the power that's meant in the CSS. To what to what you were just saying, I've heard some people that criticize using that sort of nested structure and less because it does make the Ultimate compiled CSS files so big, and you don't have to do that, right? right. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. But you know, what's your what's your overall take on that? I'm not, you know, so uh, you're a systems architect, and, you, and you're writing something big, you know, like you, know, you got something big, and it gets to the point where you know you need, I need to shave off five milliseconds. I heard some of just did their whole, re, you know, they redid their whole um, base camp thing. So they're, they're really big. They need to speak. They need, they need to do that stuff. Um, that's what you worry about, and, that's, you know, and if, that, if that is going to save you time, then that is going to save you time. It might not be the effort, you know, the time that you think you might be saving, nesting it, coding it, whereas you're going to lose time for your, your client, then obviously trade-off, you know your trade-off we need to do. Um, so it's just really very dependent for a project. Personally, um, you know, you, you worry about the scaling issues when you get there. When you get there. Uh, we, we're, we're building our web app, so, you know. We'll worry about when we get there. I'm nesting right now. Um, I, I, I don't see the performance issues. You know, I'm hoping on day one, since we launched, we have 500 million users using it. It's like, oh, I should have nested. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, uh, then you can be a bigger problem. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah. if you should yeah. only be so lucky. Yeah, the thing I found though was that the nesting itself ended up taking up time and, and paying attention to all that. So. It's it's one of those things where it's you know it's whatever your habits are. You know if you're not if you're not comfortable with it yet, then you're like ah oh, I can't do this. But you know over you know over over you know, a couple of days or so doing it, 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 it really does just pick in. You know once you start the way you. That's how I've been doing it, how I've been, you know, we're the guys at the office. Uh, we have uh, Robert Blur and our interns now working with them on it. And it's just the way you just, you just start writing your CSS differently, you know. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just second nature. Um, so it does pick up, but, you know, there is that, there is that curve. Um, but if, if, you, if you've been doing it for so long, it's just, and if it's just against the grain, then, you know, maybe, maybe the next thing is important. You don't have to use the next thing. you still got the power of mixing. you still got the power of everything else. So, you know, there's still so much more that can give you. Have to kill less because of you know one or two things. Uh, I'm sorry, he was. In. I was going to say one thing about performance. If your performance bottleneck is down to CSS, then <laughs> 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 it's like they go over like compressing one image, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one SQL query can you know ten thousand lines of CSS is not going to. It's it's yeah yeah. There there I mean there's there's certain, sometimes it's not valid. It's, it's Sometimes they look at these frameworks, you know, like uh, one of my one of my favorite frameworks that you know is I'm just, a little ashamed to say because they don't really support it anymore. Blueprint, you know, anyone use Blueprint? Yes, we don't. Don't buy people my loan. They don't really support it anymore, but mm -hmm. it is pretty heavy. But if you know, if you've been using, I've been using it for a while. I know what to chop off, you know, so I make it light. But um, the Blueprint is really heavy to be a CSS framework. And so, uh, as far as performing issues, you know, I haven't run into it, even my user really heavy version of it, but sometimes these things can add off. Well, with CSS now, I mean, you're not only talking about the size of the CSS file, but you're talking about hardware. So, I mean, you have it's access to, to hardware exactly. now through CSS, so yeah. there is a performance concern no matter how big <coughs> your CSS doing, is. Yeah, whatever you write, anyone, you guys seen uh, Fatigue's talk last time? He did the flame demo? Yeah. yeah. That was, you know, yeah, so <laughs> if you got that somewhere in these files, then, you know, that's going to be killing. You guys need to remember, this is just presentation. This is just markup. Yeah. This is HTML and CSS. This is not programming. This is not development. This is not business rules. This Wait is. Well, hold on, hold on. 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 Some people, these are business rules. Well, yeah. Maybe so, but it's, it's presentation. It's not yeah. making it's not making decisions based on it. Right. And a right. CSS file that you're that you're relating, if that same file is like or you click on five different pages and it's pointing to that CSS file, it's already cached. It's not gonna be loaded again. You're not gonna like be loading that CSS or file also every single page. Black man gets impression. You can compress that CSS file now to practice nothing. Well, and, and, and Les does that. Les actually does yeah, it, it, it. It strips away the white space. Yeah, yeah it totally yeah, it gets uh, away. Uh, does it, it get rid of the comments too? Or does it, it, it still keeps the comments. It doesn't get yeah, that's kind of strange. You'd think you'd, yeah. it'd do that. But, uh, but it does yeah. It does strip away the white space. But this is still, it's just presentation layer to me. Yeah. It's, 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 that's, that's not, I can't ever see CSS being a bottleneck. I can see your SQL server or your MySQL server. Sure, that's going to be bottleneck. It won't be itself the bottleneck, but, but I have, I've had a couple of CSS companies where it was like it was one of the things that that did help shave time off. It, it itself, what it wasn't like everything else is cool. It's everything else is good. It wasn't one of those. It was like you know we got we got this to clean up. We got a twenty k CSS. Yeah, we can't clean this up. It was I have I have seen that. So I mean you know there are other elements where it's not it's not the bottleneck, but it's you know just like anything else. Anything else you want to clean up, you always want to make sure you know you're writing the best code, you're writing the best stuff. You always want to you know police yourself and you can clean up your stuff. Uh, Paul Irish from uh, I believe Google that um, writes a lot about performance and stuff. Mm -hmm. Basically, it says you're not allowed to worry about CSS until <laughs> after you've done this whole list of other things that are perform yeah. performance, yeah. Yeah. which most people don't get around to doing. Amen. Right, right. Amen. Worry about this first. Um, <laughs> real quick, I just got to talk about something else to put the slides. Another cool thing about less is the commenting system. Um, I hate the forward slash the asterisk and the, the back slash the asterisk. If you just double slash comments out. I love that. Um, uh, what about doing IE6 for Air Next Four rules inside CSS? You know, right about last night, oh. using a zoom app to get hash land and then uh, starting all your applications. Do you have to do that with any conditionals or? Not gonna lie, I, I don't even support. I don't. That's flame bait, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> IE6 should, 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 is, is not supported, period. It's, a, it's officially dead. <laughs> it's officially <laughs> dead. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Now, I support it by saying, Papa, 
this browser is not supported. It does not, it does not conform to standards. Find another browser. I, I think so, well, I think we're going to wrap this up real quick. I want to say thank you guys so much for uh, letting me uh, ramble a little bit. Uh, I am, uh, and I'm going to be like seamlessly promoting uh, something else here. I'm doing, um, I am writing, uh, I'm a UX guy, and so a lot of you guys, you know, I know you should have bought stuff at UX, and I know you guys can do I am writing um, some um, UX stuff for mobile development, and I would love any type of help from the community if you guys, you know, were even remotely interested in what I said tonight, even though it wasn't related to what this book will be about. Because believe me, this book will be awesome. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I pledge to it. So uh, he's not going to get the the Kickstarter funding unless he meets a certain amount of pledges. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, uh, I have, I believe, like 19 days left. Um, so yeah, so um, so this is the link. I got a couple of little things here too as well. Um, I'm still talking to a lot of different things, you know, different people who I want to be interviewing, trying to get them to talk to a lot. I'm not just not something that's really about my what I think and stuff like that too. It's going to be more community driven type of book. Uh, and a lot of smart, smart people are trying to hold off. A lot of these guys are going to tap into their heads, adapt to tap. We actually have User Insight who's here in Atlanta. Um, a lot of good minds are going to tap into you and see what's going on with mobile. Um, I'm just really like iOS and Android, and actually like it's my phone, I buy it. So thank you again so much. I'll be here if you have more specific questions. You want to try to like pick, you know, pick a fight, that's awesome. Um, and, yeah, thank you, Wes. Thank you. Yeah, all the sponsors for supporting this. Yeah, thank you. All right.